Your Excellency, Phil Pulella, I am a correspondent for Reuters. Um, and how do you see your role? I would venture to say that most of the people in this room are very critical of the current pontiff. Um, so how do you see your role in, 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 in talking to the Pope? Will you be seeing him while you're here? First, um, my relationship with the Pope, of course, he is the Peter of our time. Um, I am as a bishop, the member of the college, collegium of the bishops, and so the most, and the relationship with the Pope is uh, brothers, the fraternity first. The Pope is not a boss, you know, in, in a worldly way, manner, and the bishops are not employees. This would be very worldly, and this is not correct. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to Peter, exactly, Peter, and to the apostles, do not dominate your brothers. And so, therefore, the bishops must have the freedom also to speak to the Pope. Otherwise, there is no true fraternal relationship. When I am not able or when I am fearing that when I will speak even an admonition with reverence, of course, to the Pope to help him, then we have no fraternal relationship. There is no true collegiality. There is fear, and this should not be in the church. And even Pope Francis, uh, he sometimes uh, called the bishops to have the paresia. It means this is a free speech, and he likes this. And, and this I try to do, and I, but always in the res respectful form. This is important. So, and when I am in my conscience as a bishop seeing some dangers for the entire body of the church. We are a family. The church is not a, an NGO. or uh, We are a family. In a family, you can, you can say to the father or to the elder brother respectfully also some admonitions. And this, this, this climate should be in the church, but this is missing. I am seeing bishops are intimidated, many. They don't have the courage to say something, for the love for the Pope, even. And this, when I am doing, I am really saying this in all my conscience, it is for love for him, for real brotherly love. And I will tell him, Holy Father, I am your best friend. I have never prayed so much for no one in my life as for Pope Francis, really. And when I made some statements, even publicly, I did this for love for him, to help him, as St. Paul did to Peter in Antioch, or as some saints did in the past, St. Bridget, St. Catherine of Siena, they addressed the popes with very clear statements. And so, I think this should be our climate in the church, the spiritual. Yes, the so Dubia. The yes, I consider the Dubia presented by the five cardinals, inclusively the present cardinal here, Robert Sarah, is a great work. It will go down in history as a um, heroic act, I think. It will go down in history. We should live not for this time. We should live for next 100, 200 years and for eternity. This is, this matters. Not was today is, is said about this, but it is objectively, I think, it was a must needed action of the cardinals to present the Pope de Dubia in clarity. And I think it is a meritorious heroic act. Claire Jean Grave, Religion News Service. Since we're on topic, I would like to know what you, both of you, uh, think about the answers that Pope Francis provided regarding the Dubia. The answers the Pope provided are unfortunately unsatisfactory. Uh, they cause more dubia than resolved. We have to be honest. We cannot make here some fictions and to lie one to another. It would be not honest. We are not little children. We have to be honest. The answers was confusing, vague, and an art of, art of confusion, really, the answers. This must be stated. Unfortunately, 
we have to to state this and then to pray for the Pope to help him, maybe to give them more clear answers to help him. 